Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Game Pass Grab Bag, your weekly podcast reviewing games in the Game Pass Collection, bringing you three unique perspectives for bringing skill range. I am the one who sees the day, Andrew. With me, the one who ends up wasting the day, Keith. Hello. And with us, our special guest, the one who saves the day, Dave. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again, Dave, for this special adventure in Deathloop by Arcane Studios. Deathloop is a first-person shooter where you're infiltrating. You're trying to eliminate seven targets to help end a time loop that you are currently stuck in, where it repeats the same 24 hours. But Deathloop is brought to you by Arcane Studios, the people who are behind Dishonored and The Prey Game, which was Liz, both those games were Liz's favorite game, but unfortunately she couldn't uh, make time for this week to join us. So thank you again, Dave, for joining us. Going around, I guess I'll start. Uh, for me, Deathloop, this is a definite game. I actually had a ton of fun with Deathloop. It took me a while to start. Like, it, it took me a while to really kind of get hooked into this game. But once I kind of understood how things were going, I was obsessed with Deathloop. <laughs> I played a lot of this game in such a short amount of time, and I freaking loved it. Uh, I think I'm going to be the stick in the mud here. And I, 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 maybe I just didn't commit enough. I don't know. I, I just, I, I see the reasons that you like it, Andrew, but it just was not doing it for me. And that's, and I see, I was curious cause it's, you could describe this game as a roguelike. It, and no, and I know, and you said that to me and that's where I went, okay, maybe I could. And I, and I can't even see those things, but it, it wasn't doing it for me. I, I just, overall, I, I could not get excited about it. And the, and the thing is, is it's not even my, it's a good game. It's just not for me. Like, I can't tell you what was bad about it. I can't tell you even really what I didn't like about it. I just, I just didn't find myself enjoying it at all. So I guess that makes it a pass. <laughs> if I wasn't clear. I definitely think this is a game. This was a lot of fun to play. I'd, I'd be interested to see what you say, Keith, about the, the, some of the things that you didn't like about it. And I guess some of the repetitiveness of the environments, I guess, would be one of my only negatives. But the game... Yeah, same here. The gameplay is great in the... Um, yeah. The story, the way it unfolds, and everything happens is really interesting. So I really like this game. Yeah, good. I'm glad you. I'm glad you see the same as me, Dave. Thank you. Hopefully, we get to change Keith's mind here. This is this makes me sad, Keith. <laughs> you make me but, sad. Yeah, I have that effect on people. Good. <laughs> but as I said, the story of Deathloop. You play Colt, a guy who has amnesia and realizes that he is stuck within a 24-hour time loop on this mysterious island, which he has no idea how he got there, why he's there. The only thing he knows is he needs to break the loop. He needs to stop the cycle. He doesn't know why he needs to, but that is his main goal that he's trying to do. So he's taken upon himself to try and assassinate these particular targets in order to break the loop. And while he's trying to do this, there's also a another assassin out there who does remember everything, but is keeping everything a mystery to him, who is purposely out trying to hunt him and prevent him from breaking the cycle. But going around, Keith, did you at least like the story? Were you interested at all? I mean, slight, slightly, but not really. I did. I really liked the dialogue. I, I Oh, I think the dialogue's I, I thought the back and forth between Colt and Juliana was interesting. I thought they were funny. I I thought the voice acting was great, not to, to to spoiler that, but I I wasn't but yeah, I think overall it was like okay, it it was where I agree with you. It felt like a roguelike in that aspect of it was just a means to an end. It was it was there to 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 it do that more because, depth than just because a means to an end. I, and I and I'm sure that it did. And I I was gonna ask you, is it a spoiler that he's got amnesia or I just missed that? No, because right at the beginning. Because I know that, yes, you don't know, but you, and that's a weird thing. Like you, there's other cults. You're not the first cult, but you don't remember anything. But then you start to be able to remember everything. And I get it. It's a video game. It's got to start somewhere. I just, <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't. Oh, wait, I didn't, are you like, oh, this, this is unplausible. It's not that it's, no, un, you, it's not. You would remember if you were in a time loop. It's not that it's unplausible. I'm just getting, I just don't understand why you don't remember any of it until that moment. That's all I'm saying. There's a reason. <laughs> well, okay. Well, then there you go. <laughs> there you have it. There's a reason. Thank you. Yeah. So I thought the, um, 
I thought the story was good. I looked up some videos after the ending because the ending didn't fully make sense to me. And so I was like, okay. Yeah. I, I was a little disappointed with the ending. To me, it was just like, there it is. And it's like, what? I feel like there was supposed to be more of an explanation. So, so I looked up. Yeah. Too. So there's some YouTube videos online that talk about like basically breaking down all the things you can find, or if you don't find them or read them, the, the story was way more in depth than I ever thought. <laughs> That's one of the things <laughs> I realized is because it's so much environmental storytelling, there's a lot you can yeah. miss. So there's, there's like the basic story, but then there's like a very deep nuanced story below it. Yeah. And it does kind of iron out some of the questions that you may have of like, why are these people fighting and what's going on and why Ugh, some of the loop stuff that's a little bit more confusing. It's, it's interesting, but it's, it's very, I didn't realize how in depth it got. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, a bit of the same with you. I how much did you guys read? Did you guys read like everything you picked up? I skimmed a lot of it. Yeah, I read and listened to a lot of the audio logs and stuff, but some of it made sense, but some of it because of the the when you listen to it, it may not make sense because you're getting yeah. them in in whatever order you pick them up in. Yeah, I agree, Diff. Like that's I actually I skimmed through a lot of it. I was first reading a lot of it, but some of it's super short of just like a random person be like, oh, this guy really ticked me off because he leaves the toilet seat up, like something really random. And I'm just like, well, why did I waste my time with that? So I started to skim through a lot of it. But usually when you pick up something, there's at least like a little text box on the screen that gives you kind of a hint like, hey, so-and-so leaves the door open at this time in the afternoon or whatever. So it kind of gives you a hint for gameplay. But yeah, I ended up skimming a lot of it. But I th- I feel like by the end of it, I at least I th- I feel like I had like 85 to 90 percent grasp of the story. Did, this may go on via spoiler, so if it is, you could just cut it. Did, did you even know that he? This was his second time in a loop, and he had already broken out yes. one once. Yeah, I completely Cause, missed cause that. Juliana, spe- <laughs> Juliana specifically says that once, where she said, "Yeah, you've done this before." I didn't get it as a I, second. I, I didn't, had no idea. Literally until I, I like looked online and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I didn't. See, I didn't I, catch I, that either. I just because I. Cause I feel like that's fairly early on she says that because i kind of remember her saying that to me but i just took it as like a yeah to this you're in this loop you wake up every day doing this right so yeah you've done this day before you've done this thing before yeah you know i i caught it because in like well that is the other thing too is anytime you start a stage you have a quick back and forth with juliana it's super quick it's usually like three or four lines between each character which gives you some story and then it's like, that's it. Like you don't talk to her at all anymore as you're doing your run. And then it's like, well, down that ends runs that run ends. You start another one. Here's another couple sentences of like story that she's feeding you. So it is kind of something where it's like you blink, you miss it because she's not going to repeat that dialogue again. So I can understand Dave where you might've missed it. Cause that, that was the only time I remember them saying like, Oh yeah, you were in a loop before she said you left and you came back. So, yeah, I can I can totally understand why you missed it, Dave. Yeah. Because that that is one of my complaints. Because I loved the story in the back and forth as Keith was saying. It's just so quick. Yeah, that was quick. But I I like the story though. To me, it's I feel like you. I mean, I feel like as a recent we've kind of gotten some time loop games. You know, most recently we had a uh, twelve minutes. But I don't know this this whole first person kind of assassin time loop thing. I thought it was awesome. And so, like, the, I was intrigued by the story of, like, what is going on? Because the environment was cool. Picking up these pieces of paper, learning about the visionaries, learning about cult, Juliana. I, I thought the story was awesome. I just, I wish they did a little bit of a better job giving you a story between segments. Because, like, there's not really even cutscenes. Every once in a while, you find, like, a big hint of, like, how to take out a visionary. And you get, like, a little cutscene, but it's not really story-wise. Yeah, they're, like, I wish they kind of focused books. a little better looking yeah. things that which were which were cool but yeah like i would have preferred more of it yeah I, are you I, talking about like the little like cartoon vignette things yeah yeah i think it would have been nice if they did a little more dialogue in like explaining the story with those because it is unfortunate that if you blink you can kind of miss a story yeah i but, usually don't want hand holding with things but i felt a little bit more with the story would have been nice because it was interesting yeah 
Yeah, because I mean, I feel like, like you said, there's kind of like two stories going on. There's like the story of like you as cult, why you're doing this and why you're trying to break out of the time loop. But then there is an overall like kind of lore story of who these visionaries are, like why they're here, like what they stand for, how evil of people they kind of are. And so like there are these like kind of different stories going on because you find out, you know, like, oh, there was like other people and there's all this other lore that you can go into. So I, I feel like they could have done a little better with hand-holding, explaining the overall story with Colt and why he wants to get out better. But I do like the rewarding aspect of you get more story by digging. Yeah. No, no me too. Yeah, it definitely felt like a game that you could put... Like, it's very open world more than anything. Yeah. And, and I think that leads into... It's very into, arcane style. Yeah, and it, it definitely plays into what Dave was saying as far as the dialogue or, you know, the things you pick up being... And everything's sort of out of order, so you have to piece it together yourself. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I I think it's cool that it has that aspect to it, but at the same time, I, I, I get lost enough sometimes in open world games, and so I, I think that that's where I, I, I struggled to find direction and purpose in what I was doing. That, and that's what I find so odd, because... I think you were the same as Liz. You loved the two arcane games. We played Dishonored and we played Prey. And, like, they're kind of the same thing of, like, you do kind of have a semi-linear path, but it's multiple avenues of you being able to travel and traverse. And that's why I'm surprised. You're kind of like, ah, I don't know what to do. I mean, those were those were more RPG, though. And, and they had more direction. And, yes, Deathloop has a direction, but there's just, I don't know, it's busy to me um there's there's something about it and i i don't think i actually really liked dishonored i think i didn't mind it i think i would and i think i liked prey prey scared you, me you loved prey yeah i mean it scared you with the uh with the body falling <laughs> the out dang body but but yeah i i did i do remember really enjoying prey but i i don't think i was big on dishonored it was it's like a mediocre for me but i i just i thought the gameplay for Deathloop is just a ton of fun. I remember like I was always kind of lukewarm with this game. Anytime I've heard it or saw videos of it where people are like, Oh, it's Groundhog's Day and you restart everything. Like you don't keep your load out. You just start all new again. When I heard that, I'm like, that just seems so repetitive. I, but it wasn't until I actually started playing this where I, you, I learned where you actually at one point do start to save your weapons and your perks and stuff like that. So that's why this game to me is a bit of like a roguelike because as you're doing runs, you're picking up higher quality guns because guns have a quality to them. They'll have better perks to them. Makes your runs easier. You know, you can learn information that you carry over. The the gameplay, and I understand where people are saying like, oh, it's a little repetitive. I was not, I did not feel like I was like bored with repetition in this game. I'm I'm sure as I got more into it and as I did more things, discovered more, I would have been doing different like things in different order. But I I got to the same like two or three visionaries like every time and I was just like I don't know, I just kept doing the same thing, trying to be like, Alright, no, this time I, I just have to do this, I have to I have to go in. Like one of the things about the gameplay for me that I really struggled with is, and and again, this could be one of those things that as you get more skills and, and whatnot, that it changes, but it, it talks about, or like, it seems like it wants to be very stealthy. And honestly, I didn't, I didn't find myself being very stealthy. I was just going yeah. guns blazing just about every time I was I'd try like maybe like one or two stealth kills and I'd be like, all right, I, I've been found. So, now it's just guns for everybody. I, I, I mean, I, I think this sort of game lends itself to at least you, you usually walk into an environment and you have to at least start with some stealth so you don't get completely overrun with people. And at least take out, like, a few guys that way. Yeah, see, I was more like you, Keith. When I first started, I thought this game was more like, hey, you need to try to stealth and, like, take some people out. I was exactly like you. I mean, because it makes sense because starting off, you're getting gray guns. Like, they have a chance of jamming. And so while you're shooting, you actually have to, like, fiddle with it and press X and, like, mash X and, you know, fix the gun, which isn't ideal in a firefight. So it makes sense that you're trying to be stealthy starting off. But I'm 100% with you, Keith. I gave up on stealth. I just, as soon as I entered, just blasted everyone. Because there's a finite amount of enemies on the screen. 
So for me, I'm just like, well, if I just wipe everyone off the map, like then I don't have to worry about people anymore. So I just kind of go guns blazing and take everyone out. But yeah, the stealth aspect of it, I enjoyed. Because even too, when you first start, they're like, oh, you can tag enemies, see their patrol route, you know, see their environments and like what they do and like areas they go to. I I tagged people maybe the first like five minutes of gameplay and then it's just like screw this I'm just gonna assassinate a few people I just go guns blazing so I have a question then did you guys play with real life Julianas ever or did you just yes okay. I did a lot I don't know because that made I felt that was your only advantage as Colt I felt besides the fact that you had multiple lives was that you could be stealthy yeah, I, I wanted to talk to you about this, Dave, because I remember you brought it up to me when you first started playing Deathloop. So another aspect of Deathloop, there is kind of a multiplayer aspect to it. So as I said, Colt is trying to break the loop, but this other assassin, Juliana, is trying to protect the loop, and she's trying to kill you. So you can actually have a real-life player. It could be a random person. It could be a friend. Or if you're so inclined, you can actually turn it off, and it'll just be a bot. But if you're going to kill a visionary, one of your main targets to break the loop... If a visionary is on the map, there's a chance that Juliana will spawn and try to assassinate you. So, like I said, if you have yourself as online mode, a random person can join your game and try to f- stop your loop. But you could, or you could actually be Juliana yourself. When you first start the game, you have the option of playing as Juliana, and you can invade random people's games and just try to kill them and ruin their game. So, Dave, I remember you told me you thought Juliana was way overpowered. So early on, yes. I did. <laughs> and did you did you turn it off? Did you only play against bots? So at the end of the game, when I wanted to, when I was like really getting into the story and like getting close to finishing, yeah, I did. I was like, okay, I just want to get through these loops a little quicker, and I turned off the live Julianas because some of them are really good. Like some of the players, obviously, are really good online, and they'll like snipe you from, you know, these big areas and stuff and you're just like i just want to go and do this quick thing and then get out of here <laughs> and it's just super annoying so so i i disagree anyone i played with nobody nobody finished ended my run really i i i kept online the entire time and not a single person ended my run nobody did I felt like, like everyone, surrounding the thing sucked. that you had to do <laughs> That was another thing that happened all the time is if you put what would they do they put mines at the top of stairs so you can't see them in Juliana's minds. You can't do anything with, and so you'd bl- you you usually can hear them beeping. Nope, it's not hers. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> see, no one was clever. See, for me, oh my god, I I absolutely loved this aspect of Deathloop. I felt bad playing as Juliana because to me it kind of felt like when I play Sea of Thieves, where I'm like, you know, someone's just trying to enjoy the game and have a fun time, and here I am just being a dick and trying to kill them and ruining their game. But the runs are so quick, so I felt I generally wouldn't feel too bad because if I did stop someone's run, to me like they they were quick, like it would just kind of start over again and like you don't really lose a lot. Like in Sea of Thieves, like you lose hours of gameplay, but in Deathloop, I feel like you lose maybe thirty minutes to an hour, if even that. So I didn't feel as bad killing people <laughs> online, but yeah, anytime a Juliana was hunting me, it was I, it was so easy to just like bamboozle kids. Like, I would always make it seem like, oh, you caught me, and I'd run around a quarter, and they would think, like, I'm low health or something, charge me, and I would just blast them with a shotgun and kill them right away. I had a, I had a loadout. I always had, I had a specific shotgun, the uh, Kessler, which is a full-auto shotgun. It had, like, a 48-bullet shotgun clip. <laughs> Jeez. I would just decimate them as soon as they would get in range. <laughs> the shotgun was and the best also, against like, Juliana by far. Yeah, because mine caused bleeding and it drained their magic power. So they couldn't use abilities to get away from me. It would just kill them right away. Gosh. And yeah, as Dave said, Colt, playing as Colt, you have three lives. So you have three lives within a run. And if all three of your lives are killed, that's when you actually lose the run and your day's over. But Juliana has none. Like she has her one life and that's it. So that was the thing. A Juliana would maybe kill me once. And then I could be like, okay, now the kid's going to camp my body. And I could just easily find them, sneak around, and just, like, assassinate them. Yeah, not a single Juliana finished my run. Uh, See, I, is it is the online Juliana on by default, or do you have to turn it on? Yes. It's on by default. But uh. they, they explain it. As soon as that aspect of the game opens up for you, it, they, of course, goes through a tutorial. Like, hey, in the top right corner here, it shows you if friends can are going to join your game or if it's going to be random people or you're just going to play offline. Okay. So it at least gives you the tutorial, and it's easy to do. Um, 
Then I must have had it on because yeah, I had I had a few invading Julianas, but none of them ever gave me any fight. One of them killed me one time, but I don't think I had any runs ended by a Juliana. At least the rewards you get are are really good. Anytime you kill a Juliana, the other thing that was interesting was when they disconnected and they just died. Oh. You could just see. Well, that's find their stuff. That's why I always left it online because if you kill a real Juliana, like yeah, they drop usually a really good gun, like a legendary gun, and some great perks. So I would always do that because if you kill a bot Juliana, you would maybe get some like currency to save your current loadout, but that's about it. So I was always like, nah, I'm going after the real kids, and I found them easier. The bots actually did a better job killing me because I felt like they gave the bots more health than a a live person. Um, but yeah, I, I could I always knew where people were hiding and I could always assassinate him. There was one Julian I was going against. The kid like camped himself by the visionary. He was probably the smartest one, but he was just around a corner. I threw some grenades and killed him. And I was like, Oh, that strategy didn't work for you, buddy. But uh I loved playing as Juliana. Did you play as Juliana at all? I never I tried it. Yeah, I meant uh, to try it and I didn't. I'm currently on like an eight win streak. Like I said, once again, I there's hasn't been a cult I haven't been able to kill. I've never lost as cult and I've never lost as Juliana. So I kind of feel bad, but yeah, I, once again, I have a, uh, an SMG as Juliana that I have that just decimates. So any cult I'm going against, I just kill. And I always love doing it because I'm always usually on the rooftop and I just see some kid trying to crouch and be stealthy. And I'm just staring at him like, ah, you poor kid. (laughs) I just kill him. I mean, I would Uh, say I loved there's, there's much less to feel bad. Like you compare it to sea of thieves. I mean, the difference is, in Sea of Thieves, it's just a, it's an open free for all. You never know if someone's going to be nice or not, and yeah. you can kind of just sneak up on someone unsuspectingly. Whereas in this, at least they've turned it on, or it's on to say, okay, they're allowing someone to come screw up their game. So you know, it's it's on them if they can't can't own up to the fight. I guess not your problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm like you know you can turn it off. So if they if I upset them, whatever. But um, there was one moment where I was playing as cult and a Juliana, I think she was actually trying to help me. I saw her assassinate a couple of the NPCs. But once again, I learned from Sea of Thieves, uh, don't trust those kids because every once in a while you'll get a kid who's like, no, I'm friendly. Then, of course, backstab you. So as soon as I saw like the kid kind of like clear a bridge for me, I went up to him and just shotgunned him. And I'm like, I'm not dealing with you. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> nice try, buddy. I don't know if this is your strategy, but uh, thanks for clearing the bridge for me. So... Didn't want to roll those dice. But uh, yeah, it especially got really nerve-wracking when I was trying to do my final run. Because in order to win the game, you have to kill all the visionaries within one day cycle. So you have to set it up in a particular way, which that does take some time. So when I was on the last segment, you have to go to this party. And I'm like, oh, crap. Sure enough, someone invaded me. And I didn't find him for a while. So I'm like, oh, this kid's camping the party. I was like, don't tell me this is going to be the one time I lose to a Juliana. And sure enough, I ended up getting caught and like just everyone's charging me at the party. And sure enough, this kid is in the middle of the mass of the group. But luckily, once again, my shotgun, I just blasted everyone and killed the kid. And uh, it was such a good feeling. And I ended up winning that the game. The turrets were also but awesome against the Julianas. The turrets? Oh, like when you hack a yeah. turret? I felt oh, see, I never had any kid be dumb enough to fall for those. So I, I, I couldn't. Confirmed that. What did you kill a couple of kids with the turrets? Oh, definitely. You just go around a corner, Ugh. and I mean, I thought the NPCs and the like and real people that was like Juliana's and just the regular NPCs. It was a good way to clear a room was with the turrets. Yeah. Which the NPCs? What did you guys feel of the NPCs? I thought they were pretty garbage as far as AI goes. Really? I didn't. It was. Like, I was glad that they were just combatant only. Like, like in Hitman, you had just come some really dumb AI moments, and it was annoying where they were non-combatant, and I don't know, it just you end up screwing things up. But And this, I, I just, it, would, it was just run and gun. Just kill them all, because I, I don't care. They're all stupid, and if I pull the trigger quicker... <laughs> then like I could shoot their friend next to them and then it would be like I had half a second where they're like, Oh, hey, you're here and then I just pulled the trigger <laughs> on them too. I thought they were fine. I mean I, I didn't th- there was a delay, but there was enough of them. Liz first pointed out because like she tr- started to try this game a little bit, 
But I think she kind of pointed out too is also why I thought it was so difficult to stealth. But the, uh, to me, I felt like the AI was relatively intelligent because they actually had peripheral vision. So like a, an AI would actually just kind of like, I feel like act like a normal person of kind of scanning. They're not just like standing stoically staring at a blank wall. Like they would actually kind of like lean against the wall, you know, kind of gaze around a little bit. Like, and they actually had like peripheral vision, which I thought was a pretty impressive. I see where you're coming from, Keith, where, yeah, you could kind of snipe someone and they're like, oh, what's going on? But I, to me, it was kind of hard to stealth because I felt like they could spot you so well. And so that's why I was generally like, whatever, I'm just going to go guns blazing. But, um, but with the gunplay, though, this game has a very heavy auto aim, and I freaking love it, though. <laughs> <laughs> because like that's one thing I liked about the AI. There's not like, oh, this is an armored unit. This is, you know, your scout unit like they didn't have a wide variety of enemy types majority of people are just like you're either melee they have a gun and there was like one type of guy that could raise an alarm but like that's it and i and i really like that because you are very fragile in this game i felt like just a handful of bullets and you're dead yeah so to me i felt like the gameplay was really well balanced because i loved the auto aim of just like left trigger then press right trigger headshot left trigger aim down sights right trigger headshot just kind of kept doing that back and forth and I, but I felt like it was well balanced that way. Yeah, I liked the gunplay as well. I thought, yeah, you know, I had a pistol that I used that was silenced all as like my main gun throughout most. Of the was game. it the um like Luger looking pistol? I think so. Is that the tribunal? It wasn't like the four pounder. Yeah, the tribunal. That's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, like you said, the the auto aim was a bit heavy, so it was nice because you were sniping at some pretty, pretty. Far distances <laughs> with a pistol. I loved it though. But you're getting headshots, but it, you know it felt good. You're like, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Moving on. I actually felt like I could aim yeah. well. <laughs> no, and it, honestly, the the gameplay overall. One of the things that, from what I could tell, I didn't I didn't explore too far is it has like a ton of accessibility settings that if, as long as you don't want to do the online Juliana experience or whatever, you can do. Uh, like unlimited reprisals. Um, you can, I mean, I turned on the auto aim lock because I yeah, made the auto I aim even better. An accessibility. But yeah, there is tons of things. So if you really want to play this game and you're you're struggling with the gameplay, or you just really want to get the story, and I think even then most of the achievements, um, yeah, the, there's heavy, heavy accessibility settings, and yeah. it's very customizable too. So you can do it to your liking and I, I i always like when games do that it's not just like well it's either on or off and i think that that's great but i love when it's customizable so you can do it to yeah. what works best for you yeah i didn't realize there was one that was like it, i didn't realize it was so heavy because i didn't explore too much in the options until later but i come to find out because i was looking up some guides on some of the achievements and people were saying hey turn on one hit kill turn on this 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 and it doesn't cancel achievements so it's just like oh so that's when I found out that there was actually like a pretty significant accessibility option. Um, but where's your guys' uh, favorite loadouts or guns? I like the shotgun, like you were saying. That became the Kestrel, the full auto yeah, one. Yeah, the full auto one was just ridiculous against tough enemies late in the game. Yeah. Um, the pump one wasn't too bad though. Like it was like the Vorshack or something like that. Was it the Strelak? I don't know the. No. the- that one had a huge drum. Is what oh, no, the Strelok might have been the full auto shotgun. I might be confusing some of the names. Maybe. But yeah, that was the one that I had that I really liked because it was – and I only had a purple one actually that was that was pretty dang good. Um, but it had – it was a sh- – it used shotgun shells, but it, it like focused the shell so it shot like a straight slug. And then with the auto aim, I could like snipe from a good like I don't know fifteen <laughs> meters or I don't know I don't know fifteen meters is a lot or not. I think it's not, <laughs> or I think it's a decent amount. <laughs> it sounds far for for my American my American mind. It yeah, seems can, can somebody tell me if fifteen meters is good for a shotgun? It feels good for a shotgun. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I liked that, and then I, I did like the tribunal. But I actually liked the four pounder a lot. It was it, again with the heavy auto aim on. It was just a lot of left trigger headshot, left trigger headshot, left trigger headshot, yep. and um, it made that running gun method a lot easier. <laughs> what about you, Dave? Favorite loadout? Um, like I said, I liked I like I don't know the names of the guns, um, but I liked 
there was a shock the auto shotgun I liked a lot um, for taking out the tougher guys, but the pistol, like I said, the silenced pistol was like my go-to when I was sneaking around the levels. Like I said, I think I used a little bit more stealth than you guys did as a whole, but oh really? Yeah, but you could, like I said, you could kind of snipe around with a pistol from pretty far, and it was silenced, and you didn't have to worry about anything. See, when I first started, there was a uh, a spiker, which was a nail gun that was a silenced gun that I used quite often. Uh, you got it in the library. It like it did extra damage. You've tagged enemies. So when I first was doing stealth, I used that gun a lot. But like like you said, Dave, when I found that tribunal that was silenced, I was like, ah, screw this gun. And I just constantly used the tribunal. My loadout, I always did the uh, tribunal with the silencer because if I went stealth option, I did the auto shotgun, like I said, with bleed and power drain if I had a Juliana going after me. Then I always did the rapier, uh, which is a single bolt action sniper rifle. It's kind of more of a DMR. Because it normally doesn't come with a scope, but mine had a scope on it, and I can't remember what perk I had on that one. I think it, I think it caused bleed as well. My, my third but, was always a quick firing, um, either the, the tiny um, quick firing gun or the um, the big one that had the big spread. If you kept firing it, <laughs> oh, the peppermill, yeah, the LMG. Oh, yeah. the peppermill was fun. I didn't like the pepper mill. I hated its recoil. It was it was really good at close range, and again, especially or, and even the, medium. I felt uh, like it was it was good at close and medium range, and it could just how many mow meters? Down guys, <laughs> give us twenty meters. Twenty meters, <laughs> 20 meters. good, good. <laughs> See, I liked I liked the rapier because it essentially was a one hit kill. And once again, with the auto aim of left trigger, right trigger, left trigger, right trigger. Oh, the perk I had, and I remember, it was a quick reload. Since it's a single bullet, you had to reload it every single time. But as soon as I put quick reload on it, it was just like, it was super quick. But having a scope on it, because there is a sniper rifle called like the, I kept calling it the Sebastian, but it's like, it was something weird. But it actually was like a four bullet clip sniper rifle. That gun did not really have auto aim on it. So that's why I quit using that. I was like, I don't want this sniper rifle. I'd rather do the rapier. And yeah, so that was usually my loadout. Every once in a while, I'd do the helps, the uh, laser gun. That gun was super like overpowered as well. I loved that gun. I didn't get that till super late, and I just didn't use it. Uh, see, it's it just stunk because it didn't have any perks on it, but it would just disintegrate people, and it had a large clip. It was easy to get ammo for it. You would just have to go to any battery and just drain the battery. Yeah, I, I like that gun a lot. But the perks I always had, I always had um, increased health. Yep. which I think really helped me against Juliana's. Cause like I said, Juliana would hit me and I think a lot of kids would think I'd be low health, but I would usually do extra health. I had extra health regen. So you only have a certain amount of health that you'll naturally heal up. There's a ton of health potions on the, in this game too, yeah. which is really helpful. But yeah, because of my build, I would yeah regenerate health. I it took, I think less damage was another one I did. And Oh, I did. Um, my feet were quiet. So even if you know, people would only detect me if I was sprinting, but I wouldn't have to crouch anymore and people couldn't hear me. So I think that was the other thing was why I was able to sneak up on a lot of Juliana's. But yeah, with that build, so many kids would think I'd be injured and then try chasing me and then I'd just decimate them as soon as they turn around a corner. Yeah, I did the increased health and the increased regen. And then definitely towards the end, I was actually switching out my third perk. Um, there was one that allowed you to like... Um, gain health with um when you get in like the toxic environments or the gas oh yeah when you breathe in gas that, yeah it heals that you. was really oh, good nice. on a certain level um yeah there's a few other ones that were good on like specific situations that you're like oh this this fits this sort of thing yeah one thing that i kind of complain about and i wish they kind of added in this so i guess we kind of didn't explain every time you there's the game has four stages morning uh, noon, afternoon, and evening. And, you know, there's four maps you can go to of the, like, four different areas of the island. And depending what time of day is, like, the like, area you're going to will actually significantly change. You know, tides will rise. There'll maybe be more destruction. You know, some maybe more enemies, less enemies, depending where you are and what time of day it is. But I kind of wish this game had preset loadouts for you. Because, yeah, like, I, like you said, Dave, there's one specific area that has a lot of gas in it. But then the other three have almost none. I mean, unless someone's using a gas gun, but that's very rare. 
So like having that perk was only good for one area. I wish it just had preset loadouts that I could just be like, oh, I want loadout one, loadout two, and just quickly switch. Because yeah, then like because I was trying to build a hacking loadout because you can actually hack different things, oh, like, yeah. actually hack the mines, yep. hack faster. So I tried to do a hacking loadout, but I was just like, it was just too annoying to switch everything that I ended up just not doing yep. that anymore. So I, I did that too. That was another one I did because like you said, that's good on a specific level. Like yeah. Yeah, there's some areas that have a ton of turrets and tons of mines where that perk is really good. Yeah. But I got too lazy. It's like, screw it, I'll just shoot the mines. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about hacking anymore. Um, so I have a question. But, uh, so there, <clears throat> the, there's a set path of how you're supposed to to get all eight visionaries in one day right like you can't yeah do it in multiple different ways you have to go this one first this one second all these things and you kind of figure that out the more and more times you do the runs yes like as you complete more leads or whatever it is yeah okay there's there is a specific way you are supposed to do it in order to win the game gotcha okay you really couldn't i mean there's literally no way you could do it the first time yeah yeah, because every time you're doing, like, as Dave said, there's no way you could just, like, after we've beaten this game, I couldn't just be like, hey, I'm going to pick it up my very first run, win the game. Like, you can't do that because, you know, you need, your character needs to learn codes to doors and stuff like that. And those actually will change when you start a new game. Uh, there's some okay. codes that are that are the same, but, like, those are, like, not as important codes. So that's why I think they're the same. But yeah, you need your character needs to learn codes for doors. He needs to learn patterns and passwords in order for you to set up to do a perfect run in order to end the game. Okay. So there are some speed runs online which were very entertaining to watch. I thought were really cool of like how quickly people were learning passwords and then going to areas and stuff like that. I always love enjoying watching speed runs. Yeah. Speed runs. But yeah, the one I saw was like twenty minutes. Jeez. Yeah. Which the time to beat for this game took me a uh, you're looking between 16 hours to 24 hours, which I actually it took me 22 hours. I, my my end play time was 22, which I now that I think about it, I think it's because I kept playing as Juliana and just screwing around with the online because I was having a ton of fun with that. I know it took me a while. I don't know exactly how long it took me. I mean, I didn't beat it, but I think I I, I probably hit maybe about seven hours total of play. Um. Yeah, so this game is surprisingly long, which is surprising because, like I said, you literally only have four areas of the map that you're going to, and you just have different time cycles. But the even though you're just going to four areas, they're small but dense. Like, that's one thing I loved. I loved the map design of this game. Like, the playgrounds that you're kind of going to, these environments, they weren't these huge, open, sprawled areas. So, like, that's when I first was playing this. I was kind of overwhelmed where I was like, because like the very first area you go to is Updom, which is kind of a like what's a Updom? living district. <laughs> what's what's up? Okay, no, not fun. But uh, <laughs> but uh, I was first very overwhelmed. But once I started to learn the map, I was like, oh, these actually aren't that big. But they had such amount of like character and just like things in the maps that I never felt like I was bored seeing these areas. If anything, like, that's one thing I think this game did so well. Because obviously people describe this game as like, oh, it's like Groundhog's Day, the movie. And it actually kind of was. Like, I was learning these maps and routines. And, like, because when you see Groundhog's Day, you know, by the end, Bill Murray is, like, you know, moving slight things and it's causing traffic jams and, like, all these weird events. I kind of felt like I was doing that by the end. Like, I kind of knew, like, oh, there's going to be three people here. I'm going to go around this corner. There's going to be this. There's going to be that. And I felt... I don't know. I don't know if you guys had that same feeling, but I really liked how the map design of the flow was going. So, so then actually that's a question because I didn't get this far. I know it talks about the, like, what is it? There's some sort of like level of like a heat level almost that rises as you kill more visionaries. Does that add more enemies or do they just get more difficult? And then because of the fact that there's really kind of a linear, perfect run, does it just happen naturally if that makes sense i forgot that existed now that you bring that up i didn't even know it existed this this is my first I, time I, about this i feel like and i remember it was a very quick text i do remember now that when Keith says this that it said something about that of like enemies being harder but the rewards are higher 
because I do remember seeing more legendary trinkets on the ground and stuff like that. I guess, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. But I kind of just feel but, like that's just as you progress in a game, it just gives you more. Like it's, a, is it? I, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, can you do something to make that harder, or does it just progress as the game progresses? I think it just progresses because to me, it didn't feel like it was harder. No, if I anything, by like the end, it felt easier. Yeah, because I was getting really good perks that were legendary. And so the beginning like of your run, you'd it. just be flying through because it, yeah. it'd be easy at that point, And then the difficulty would increase to match what your trinkets and stuff were. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I didn't find it very hard. See, that kind of makes sense. Um, and that's where I, I guess I can kind of see even a little bit of the, the Groundhog Day in it, too. Is like every time you get a little bit closer, it gets a little bit quicker to get back to where you were. Yeah. So that's why I never felt bad as Juliana killing someone because you really weren't losing too much. And it was just like, ah, well, whatever. I just got to do my steps again over again. And it, like I said, it wasn't very long. Like once I did my perfect run from beginning to end, I think it was less than an hour. So like once you know what you're doing and you're going in and out, like, yeah, it's quick. But if you're you know early in the game, like obviously you're staying in these areas longer because you're really trying to turn over every rock find these notepads and stuff like that to get passwords and learn things, learn how to figure out how to like move the visionaries around. So like, but, but when you discover notes, like you don't lose that information. So if you get killed, like you don't lose anything. So you actually progressed. So I I think this game does such a good balance of anytime you're doing something, you are getting rewarded because if you find a good gun, like you, there's a good chance you'll have enough currency to save that gun and for future runs but I don't know. I, I loved the balance. The gameplay loop of Deathloop is, was so addicting to me. I was never bored. I actually played this game. So I just recently had my birthday. And Liz was like, you know, instead of taking you out or something like that, she's like, I feel like you would just want to play video games all day, undisturbed. And you know what? That's what I did. And I played Deathloop, I think, for like 12 hours straight. <laughs> no, I was like eight hours straight. But I was not bored. That's, that's when I beat it. And I was still like, I want to keep going. I mean, and that's one of those weird things that I, I go back to where I wasn't sitting there mumbling and grumbling the whole time I was playing it. I wasn't complaining about it. I just, I don't know what it was, but I wasn't, I wasn't getting hooked into it. And I just, I, I couldn't get excited to play it enough. See, and I don't blame you. It took me a while to get yeah. hooked into it. But once I did, I was hooked. Yeah. It took me a while too. I, I, I think... At first, I was like, hey, you know, I was playing through it, and I'm like, I've heard this game is good, and I went through my first few loops, and I'm like, okay, I think I get this. But then it, it hits a rhythm at some point, and it's, yeah. I don't want to say it's late, but it's like middle to late, where all of a sudden you're like, I don't know, like it, it really picks up its pace, and I was like dying to play it more. Yeah. That's exactly how I was. Like, I can't really quite explain the moment. Like, once I got the ability to save guns and perks for loadouts for future runs, that's when I was kind of like, okay, I'm enjoying this a little bit more. And then, like, it was a couple hours after that, it was just like, I don't know what happened up, but I was like, I want to keep going. I want to keep going. Another run. And I loved it. Um, But another thing I forgot to ask, though, for you guys' loadouts, we didn't even talk about the superpowers. Like, you get these, what they're called slabs, which are essentially superpowers. You get two that you can equip with you. Which ones did you guys like? I always use teleport. Like that that yeah, was almost I an loved, anyone. Yeah, shift. Cuz you needed yeah. it you almost needed it for to get some places. Not if you took double jump. If you took double jump, you can kind of get away with not doing shift. Yeah, I still liked having it. Um Yeah, me too. <laughs> but um What was my second one? I'm trying to think. There was there was one that was like my go-to. Um I always did yeah, the one you said which was shift and then the other one's called Nexus which would link enemies together, which was awesome. I didn't link enemies enemy. together. Ah, oh, oh, I used it all the time because so you do the it does, headshot it thing together. Yeah. You kill one and it does a headshot to all the enemies that are linked or you could assassinate. So like what you do to one enemy, you do to all of them. So it was also super entertaining. If you would link like eight people and kick them off a cliff and you literally see like eight people going over the ledge. Oh, Nexus was such a fun ability. I didn't use it enough to late. Um, but it, it was so, it was, it was great. It was I think, really good in the party. Um, I thought, Oh yeah, that was a great way to clear up. Cause that, that area is so congested with people. Yeah. Um, I think Nexus was like one of the only ones I got consistently because I kept killing Harriet and I didn't get past yeah. that. So I, I, 
probably, yeah. And then I'd get whatever, like, Juliana would drop for me if I'd have a Juliana invade my game. But Which was usually shift. Yeah, probably. Uh, I, had the, I had the, like, power-up one. Oh, Havoc? The one, yeah, where you become, like, a berserk? I don't think I ever yeah. used that one. I used, I, it, I used it, like, twice. I used it because I had it. I, I don't know that I would say it was worth picking up all the time, but I, I used it because I had it for a while. I forgot that I... the uh, One of the perks is, like, an invisibility one. It's called Ether. I usually forgot about it. One Juliana that invaded my game had it, and I remember, like, being in an area, and I was seeing, like, flickers, and I'm like, what the heck was that? I'm like, I, f- I swear I saw something. And then all of a sudden, like, she would just appear in front of me and instantly kill me. And then I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. So that's what I learned. I was like, oh, wait, there's an invisibility one. I forgot about that. And so the kid, once again, thought he was being sneaky, but I kind of figured out that glimmer. And so sure enough, I just decimated that kid as soon as I found him around a corner. Um, but, oh, my gosh, there was one perk that only Juliana gets, the Masquerade. Yeah. And she can steal the identity of an NPC, but there's an achievement to for you to steal the identity of Cult. There was so there was one game I invaded a cult and I took his identity so I looked like cult and I definitely confused the kid because the kid was running from me and went around the corner. When I came around the corner, like he was invisible. He could have killed me. But he was looking at me and didn't know who I was because I looked like cult. And so that when he reappeared, I just blasted him. But it was the funniest thing because I clearly bamboozled him. But uh, the, the abilities in this game are so fun. Like, I think this is something Arcane does so well with like their games. I love they always have these weird, fun gameplay abilities. Like, there's another one where you can throw enemies. Carnesis. Like, they're super comical and fun. Yeah. But yeah, like, the maps to me were just, like, such fun playgrounds to, like, use these abilities. Because, like, as I said, their sins are so small and condensed, they actually have a ton of, like, avenues of where you can go through things. Like, there's vents you can crawl through. You know, if you have the double jump, or if you have the teleport ability, or if you have the invisibility, uh, like, perk. Like, there's... That's one thing I loved. I think Arcane always does a really good job with their games. It's like it really caters to how you want to play of going guns blazing, or do you want to sneak in or do you want to do this? And I think the maps in the overall environment of death loop is awesome. Cause it's like a futuristic sixties. Cause the game takes place in 1963. So I think like the costume style and like the environment style, is awesome. That explains the very like fallout theme or feel to it. I should say not theme. Yeah. Well, it all felt like it was like the, it was looping on the the last day of your life sort of thing. Like everyone, it was, it was interesting how they had the people respond to, to what was happening. Like it's supposed to be the first day. Well, it's the first day, but it's, also yeah. the last day. But you, you, yeah. Cause right? they all know what's yeah. happening. Right. Right. Cause so, they, they call it immortality. Right. Yeah. Yeah, or something like a, yeah, a mortality or something like that. Yeah, because it's like they'll never die, but they basically never live either. Right. Yeah. Well, it was like weird. So it's supposed to be the first day of them being on the island. I don't think nobody really knows they're in a time loop. Like you are you like and one Juliana of the only characters the only that is kind of yeah. no, they know yeah, that are retaining your memory. No, they well because they keep I, going. See you tomorrow when you kill him or like stuff yeah. like that. I think. All right. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think they do. They are aware they're kind of in a time loop. But they don't remember. I can't quite remember. But they don't remember. But they just they don't remember what things are going on. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Can you imagine more to it than that? But yeah, like I think they all know. So obviously, there's some people there that are like setting up stuff. Can you imagine being in that time loop, and you're one of the few people that like, have a job? You're stuck in the kitchen. <laughs> you're literally spending your time loop of you just constantly making the same meals every day. But at least you don't remember it. <laughs> Everyone else is having fun, and you're the one guy setting up the stage. You're like, ah, this sucks. <laughs> this is boring. I blow my back out every day at 3 o'clock. It's awful. Yeah, or it's the one day you have, like, diarrhea. <laughs> it's like, come on! <laughs> you had to pick today. <laughs> oh, this is the one day I had food poisoning. <laughs> so, uh, one thing I really did like, actually, though, was, and, it's, and it was in very weird bits... I'm transitioning here, if you can't tell, is the music. <laughs> is there was like bits and parts where there'd be like, I don't know, like weird like circus music happening and just like, I don't know, it was weird, weird things. And some of it obviously made sense because there was like weird carnival areas on some of the maps too. But like, I don't know. Yeah. There was weird bits where I was like, the music is just, I don't know, it was really cool. It wasn't It wasn't anything, no. uh, what'd you call it, iconic. Uh, it didn't give me any yeah. goosebumps. But it was good. 
Yeah, I mean, so there's a visionary that is a game designer. So as Keith said, yeah, there's some areas that are designed like games, which, yeah, like are really cool. Like when you have to go hunt that visionary, he set up a whole mansion that's supposed to be like Among Us. Like someone's supposed to be the invader, which of course is you, and you're just going around killing people. But it's just like, it's these cool environments with that. Um, of course, he makes like a um, like a laser trap and pressure plate gameplay. Like he has a trivia game. Like there's various games, so they have music with. But of course, also another one of the visionaries is a radio psychotic host. musician. Yeah, and he kind of hosts his own radio show too. I was say, yeah, there, and so he there's a, he plays some songs. Yeah, there's a, a just like a random enemy standing up on on a cliff ledge playing guitar. Yeah, <laughs> which is funny if you notice. He's practicing guitar. So if you visit that area on the first day, he's, of course, tring, 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 like really bad at it. But if you go to the area at night, he's actually playing music. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's what I love. I love the subtlety of this game, like depending what time of days you're going to, because some changes are very drastic and some are very subtle. Like I said, you know, some areas, you know, you're on a like, I, I don't quite sure where you are. You're definitely like somewhere in the like high northern hemisphere. Because, like, you know, at the beginning of the morning, there's no snow, but as night falls, it gets colder and, like, the wa- like more water turns into ice so you can access other areas. But yeah, I just love the subtlety of the night and time cycle. But uh, the guns, like, the sound effects of the guns are incredibly cool. Like, the gun designs are awesome. But I, I, I loved this, the sound design of the game. I thought it was really cool. Hearing the suicide bombers that had, like, these paint bombs that had, like, this cool ticking sound. Um, and then, as Keith said, the voice acting is phenomenal. I loved Colton Juliana's banter. I wanted so much more of it. It's weird because you you were talking about it coming in like small bits and parts, but I kind of liked that because it wasn't too overwhelming. But I also agree that I really liked their dialogue and I wanted more of that at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want it during gameplay, though. Like, I could see it being overwhelming if they tried to overdo it. So I I liked what they did. I could see them putting a few more lines in, but I liked what they did. Yeah, it could very yeah. quickly turn into like a Guardians of the Galaxy situation where you're trying to listen to their conversation and then you just have NPCs yelling about I don't know the fact that you walked around a corner or whatever it may be. That's true. So it's I I That's think the there's I think there's something to be said for that, Dave. I think you're right there. Yeah, because I mean, if you are trying to stealth and try to take out a visionary. You don't want her babbling on when, you know, you're trying to hear footsteps and stuff like that. I could see that. But I just I just loved the voice actors in this game that I, I wanted more of it, though. I, that's why I wish there was at least more, like, cutscenes. I thought the visionaries were interesting, too. Like, they each had pretty unique... Um, Sadistic behavior. Yeah, they, they, were, they were all super weird in their own way. And the more you learned about them through trying to follow them and learn their routines... I don't know, it just was more interesting. You, you, yeah. you, you know what it seemed like to me? They had very Borderlands type of personalities. A little yeah. bit, yeah. Like, they were all just, yeah, very, like, caricature, very, very extreme. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, kind of fit that model. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, I mean, the worst was uh, Alexi, the wolf guy, yeah. I think that was his name. I did not realize, like, how messed up his was. Until, like, I, I did the achievement. There's an achievement to kill him with a meat grinder. And then, like, because, like, it's, he has a party. And then, yeah, it's a meat grinder that he, he drops people into in which people are eating it. So right. he legitimately is doing a cannibal party, which is really messed up. I always thought, like, oh, you know, it's just meant to be metaphorical. No, he's, he's legitimately eating people. And so I – but I liked the achievement was just like, ah, oh, throw him in the meat grinder. But uh, I love the, – the achievements of this game are really good. I don't – I would say overall, I'd probably recommend it for achievement hunters. The game overall is kind of long, but the achievements are all pretty fun. Like they're having you kill people in unique ways or do specific things. Like uh, one of the visionaries, Wenji, she has multiple copies of herself. So one of the achievements is to kill all the copies within ninety seconds. You know, there's some really easy achievements and there's some really hard ones. Uh, one of the visionaries gives you a bracelet that nullifies all your superpowers, including your your lives that you normally have. You normally have three lives. And there's an achievement to beat an entire run while wearing that bracelet. Dang. So it's essentially doing a run with no powers. Oh wow! Quick question: Can you can you save guns and not use them until a later run? If that makes sense. Yeah, like almost like- once once you save a gun, you always have it. Oh, okay. So anytime you start either a morning 
noon, afternoon, or evening cycle, like before you, you always can change your loadout. So, but if you take a gun like in the morning and drop it on the map, it's gone for that run. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, but once you start a new run, it'll put it back in your inventory. Which can be okay. tough making decisions, for sure. Yeah. Okay, that makes more um, sense. Yeah. Uh, it makes me sad that you didn't like care for this game as much as me, Dave Keith. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I... I feel like you missed something exciting. Maybe I did. I don't know. <laughs> so, like I said, overall, though, the achievements, I think, aren't too bad. I have, I think, 750. Like I said, I played 22 hours. Uh, there's a handful I know I could get, but the ones that I have left are all worth, like, 15. So they're kind of small achievements, but... There, I could easily go back and mop up some of them. I just don't think I'm going to do a run with like none of the powers. Or there's another one where I think you only kill visionaries and don't kill any of the NPCs. Like that's a very difficult achievement. I'm not going to do that one. Yeah. But um, yeah, overall, I think the achievements are at least fun. They encourage you to play game the game in a different way. Uh, but yeah, let's get to our final thoughts here. I'll kick this off. All right. Death loop. What do I say? <laughs> it's 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 a classic it's a game it's it's a game but it's not for me or whatever wh- whatever my thing was for for yeah. a long time well i mean that's why we it, do gamer pass it, yeah and it really is because it's it's one of those things that i i i can't quite pinpoint what it was that wasn't something that hooked me because i can see what andrew's saying that it's roguelike it's it's not truly because there's nothing that's really random it's it's very groundhog's day and and we keep saying that it it repeats itself over and over again but there's it's not like oh i i hated this about i didn't like this about it i really didn't have anything i just didn't want to play it i wanted to play other things and so i i don't know what it was but it i i just it was truly not for me um but i i i honestly think it's still like an 80 as far as no, I can't give it an 80 because I, I, I don't want to give it a game. Or I'm not giving it a game. I'm going to say a 79 just so it's not an 80 <laughs> because I gave it a pass. I feel like 80 or above should be my passing score. So for me, like I said, I love Deathloop. I think Deathloop is a ton of fun. Uh, give, it, give it some time as both I think Dave agrees with me. It, it, it's definitely a slow progression kind of game. For me, I just I wasn't as hooked for it at the beginning. But just something happened, and I was like, I want to keep playing. I want to keep doing runs. Um, oh, I also did forget to mention, I did play this game a lot on xCloud. And since the auto-aim is so good, I would recommend this for xCloud. Because, you know, you don't have to be a super marksman since the auto-aim is so strong. So I felt like it was very manageable to do with xCloud. Uh, I just made sure I played offline because I didn't want Juliana's invading me and then, like, lose connection or something like that. I didn't want to lose a run that way. But, um, oh, Another side note, real quick. If you are playing online with real people invading your game, you cannot pause. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you are someone who might have to pause frequently, make sure you're playing in offline mode because you can't pause if you're doing online mode. But um, yeah, I thought the Julian invading aspect of the game, at first I was like, this is going to be annoying. I had a ton of fun with it. I had fun screwing with kids online. It's very rewarding when you actually do win. You, like, we were saying you get a lot of rewards for winning the fight. I thought the characters were interesting. I loved, I thought the story was cool. The environments gameplay was great. Um, man, I, I have very little, I can kind of complain about this game. Uh, I wish I had, there was more story to it. Uh, I, but besides that, I don't know. Like that's kind of only thing I kind of complain about for me. This is, I, I got to give it a 94. Ooh. Wow. Um, so for my final thoughts, um, I don't play a whole lot of games like this. Um, like I don't don't have a podcast like you guys, so um, I, <laughs> I kind of pick my games um, kind of picky about which ones I, I know I'm going to finish and do. And so when I saw this, I'm like, this this could be a, a good game um, to do. I saw the high scores and stuff, and sure enough, I loved it. I mean, it's a it's a great game. The gameplay is fun. The story is interesting. The characters are interesting. Um, the gunplay and powers and the way that they work together um, is really good. I do think the environments do get a little bit stale um, at times because there's only the four. I liked the Juliana's invading most of the time, but not as much as you, Andrew, <laughs> um, for sure. Um, it, it might just be the different people we played. Or maybe I was playing against yeah. you and didn't know it. But um, 
but no, it was it was a it's great a game. game and not tell you. And um, like Andrew said, I, I definitely think you should if you you play a little bit and you're like I'm not sure, keep playing a little bit more. And because it, it picks up steam and it's really good, it, it hits a point where it's just really really good and it's addicting. I think I give it eighty nine. All right, all right. So there you have it, a review of Death Loop. So if you're thinking about it, I highly recommend you at least check it out. Um, at least give it some time. But, uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for us this week. So uh, thank you all so much for joining us. If you have any game suggestions, please, we would love to hear it. Email us at gamepassgrabbag at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook and Twitter at GBGBpod. Uh, I've been your hardcore gamer host, Andrew. You can find me on Xbox Live at Firebird0952. Where, where can people follow you, Dave, when you run your next marathon? <laughs> um, I'm not I follow, I'm following you. one as marathon. I tr- trust me, because that would mean <laughs> I'd be doing it and keeping up. So that's not happening. No, um, I'm David. I'm. F- you can find me at baggage one one four seven on Xbox. Um, I've been Keith, and you can find Liz on Twitter at Liz the Noob Noob is EW. <laughs> <laughs> oh, take it! You just reminded me, Keith. <laughs> I forgot because this was Liz's segment. I didn't read Metacritic. <laughs> oh, jeez, we are all discombobulated. I know. I was like, man, I feel like we're missing something, but I forgot. We oh, need Liz for order. order. Yep. I know. This is ridiculous. But anyway, Metacritic, real quick for Deathloop. It has a 7.2 user review, and it has an 89 Metacritic score. Uh, for the Xbox Series X, for PlayStation, I think it was 88. So it's very similar. Exact as mine. But fourth. Fourth car host is back. Can you guys guess what he rated the game? Three. Gotta be a zero. Three out of ten. No, he gave it a one. <laughs> Man. I figured, I so, mean, you'd give me a little bit of a, a warning ahead of this one. Yeah, so quick snippet here. Uh, he said it's a rehash of Dishonored in a roguelite version. That is to say, a version where manual saving is prohibited and during which we regularly start the game same BS as in Groundhog's Day. You don't only have one day to shoot eight targets and either you'll start again because you're dead your life bar is very fragile or because the day has come to an end but another segment here he says and then he also said the two main characters are hollow and forgettable and have no reason to exist other than to satisfy a wokish agenda which uh to me was the dumbest statement i think i've ever heard this guy say (laughs) to me i don't know there was nothing about these characters that were woke besides the fact that they were black (laughs) Is is her co-host? Is this guy racist? Yeah, that's a, that's a weird angle to take on that. <laughs> yeah. uh, that seems like a really racist comment. I mean, if I don't know, it's, it's, so he it's, said we are. It seems like there were just two main characters. Yeah, two yeah, very likable main characters. I don't. I, I thought they were very likable. Really, I didn't really put much thought in it past that, but I guess he did. So. <laughs> But I guess good for him. Black, it's 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 wokeish. So okay, but he said, you know, we are therefore the presence of a particular degraded dishonored, too light, too superficial to convince in anything, and very much behind the real dishonored in all aspects. Gosh, I think this this but, guy. I, I, I mean, is he playing a different game. I didn't even really like Deathloop, and and there's that. You know, it's and we can cut this, but you, speaking of people getting mad about things being woke that that aren't. Uh, Wolfenstein had tweeted something about um, making America Nazi free again, and people got really mad because I don't know. I guess it, it's it's somehow you know not the whole purpose of the game Wolfenstein to kill Nazis. <laughs> I know it, it was it was a very clever joke actually, and yeah, I also think we should probably just not have Nazis. Like that's a that's a thing we should just not have. Um, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty not bold statement to make. But also, it's kind of a weird thing for people to be bad at. Like, no, we need Nazis. <laughs> like, like, what? <laughs> well, it didn't say they needed Nazis. It didn't say that. But I. But also, yeah, it just seems like a really weird thing to be mad about when you know the whole point of the game is shooting Nazis. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I love Wolfenstein. I think yeah, they're trying to make a clever joke about the game, but people who don't know what Wolfenstein is just get upset about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I feel like this is one of the dumbest reviews this this guy has written written for the game though. I wonder if he gets like paid per per word or something. Somebody paying him? Who pays people? Pay me. I don't. <laughs> I say a lot of words. <laughs> I know. We just had our uh, end of the year wrap up on Spotify. 
and I think it said we created like like over two thousand minutes of content, Dang. which is in the top fifteen percent of people in our category. And it's like, man, if we got paid per minute, somebody, we would have some dollars. Somebody's gonna pick this junk up. <laughs> Pay me some money. Ah, uh, but anyway, there we go. That was the segment that Liz was supposed to cover that I forgot about. So, if you stuck around to listen to it, you're welcome. Or I'm sorry. But anyway, that's I think we all have for you. So uh, thank you all so much for joining. We love you all. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye.